Hello, this is Vince Lara in the Communications Office at the College of Applied Health Sciences at the University of Illinois. Today I spend a few minutes with Justin Constantine, Marine Corps officer, combat veteran, and Purple Heart recipient, to talk about the upcoming traumatic brain injury event at Illinois. Uh, Justin, so why is this event important to you? Well, you know, as someone who was injured in Iraq, uh, I still have PTSD and traumatic brain injury. I did go to counseling for PTSD for 18 months, weekly sessions with a psychologist, which were incredibly helpful. And I did a number of um, exercises for my brain as well. So my traumatic brain injury was relatively minor, but those are still issues I will uh, face the rest of my life. So I'm excited to come out to this event uh, because this is a big focus there. And also, so I, I can share my story, I can share techniques that have worked for me to help other veterans and other civil- civilians, frankly, who had some of the same challenges for a number of, for a number of other reasons. Uh, but also to talk about employment and the things that my company is doing related to veteran employment and, and really all way, different ways to push forward after a deployment or after life in the military or after a traumatic experience. Yeah, I mean, some of the things you talked about there, um, what are the, the techniques that helped you get, well, you said you're not past your TBI, but helped you deal with it? Yeah, well, really, um, just first of all, and, and I kind of combined PTSD and TBI mentally, which is not smart to do, but in my mind, they're, they're kind of related. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about PTSD first. And so, like I said, I did go to counseling for a year and a half every week for an hour at a time, one-on-one counseling, which has made a huge difference in my quality of life and in the lives of people close to me. Because <clears throat> my wife could tell when I hadn't gone to counseling a particular week. So <clears throat> that that made a huge difference. And I've also been a peer mentor to other folks who, are, who have PTSD as well. Um, but also, as part of as part of the counseling, you know, just sitting with a professional, identifying what's going on with me, with my mind, with my body, and understanding that that is quote unquote normal after what I've been through, after being shot in the head in Iraq, and and just learning from someone who had worked with other warriors before, who had studied this material, who was an expert on it, how to just come to terms with what I was going through and recognizing that my life is going to be different doesn't mean it's over or worse in any way, it's just different. And then some techniques I could use when I am uh, feeling anxiety, identifying situations that cause anxiety, and then what I could do. And for instance, you know, one of the, I know I'm not alone in this, a lot of veterans, including myself, can't really enjoy Fourth of July because fireworks are big progress, which is really unfortunate since it is Fourth of July. But so I know not to put myself in that environment, not to be exposed to loud noises like that, not to be in large crowds. But so that's a, a triggering event which I avoid. Uh, but also, you know, if I can feel myself, getting frustrated or other symptoms of my PTSD, I can I learn basic breathing techniques, uh, imagery, mental imagery, and different things like that to help get me to a good place. When I uh, worked in a corporate office for a few years, I worked in a cubicle and I had my back towards the door. And so my bo- I asked my boss if I could put a little mirror there on, on my counter so I could see who was behind me because that caused me a lot of discomfort as well. So that was an easy fix. So that, that's all related to the PTSD. As far as the TBI goes, um, I did do a program for about a year uh, online called Luminosity, which is really just to help me with my memory because that was the main thing that was affected, uh, how I was affected from my traumatic brain injury was uh, some memory issues. So I did that, which was which was uh, quite helpful. But also, um, I, I constantly keep trying to learn and exercise my brain. And that's, uh, that includes a lot of reading. I read two books, about two books a month, and uh, continued formal education as well because I was incredibly fortunate when I was shot through the head, the bullet narrowly, narrowly missed my brain. Uh, but there was a little bit of damage, but I do try to exercise it as much as I can. Do, do veterans often come to you for advice about how, how to deal with their injuries? Uh, a, a fair amount, yeah. I kind of developed a name for myself, I guess, in the Wounded Warrior community two different organizations I'm a part of and just 
because uh, I was somewhat senior in rank. I was a gauger at the time I was shot. And so a fair amount of people know who I am. And, and I, so, yes, a number do come to me with questions. Typically, it's just over email uh, or even LinkedIn. Sometimes it's uh, phone or text. And I'm always happy to provide some guidance. Uh, but first and foremost, it is. And my first answer is seek help that mm -hmm. you need and deserve. And I provide them with different nonprofit organizations or, or also recommend the VA uh, to go, go and start that process. What are some of the things that the veterans need to look out for as signs of a traumatic brain injury or some of the symptoms that they need to be aware of? That's a good question. I think one of the challenges is that essentially we're talking about someone who came back from the appointment. Let's just, let's just assume that the traumatic brain injury resulted from uh, something overseas or a training actually here in the States or a training actually anywhere, I guess. And so, um, first and foremost, they have to feel comfortable. They should feel comfortable identifying they went through that experience. And a lot of times, obviously, in war, it's hard to do that. Um, there's a high out tempo, there are significant things going on around you. But I mean, I was shot, but two weeks before that, I was involved in an incident where. Uh, I was almost blown up by an improvised explosive device. And we had a protocol in place whenever you were exposed to a bomb like that, you had to go see the corpsman and, and have it recorded. And so that we were fortunate that was in place. That wasn't always the case. And I'm sure in some instances now it's not done. So this, this requires senior leadership to make sure things are in place, to encourage an environment where uh, soldiers feel comfortable reporting their injury, but also then there is a certain accountability I want service members and veterans to hold themselves to, to go and seek the care that they need um, if, if you're in, in that. If nothing else, if for no other reason than to have that issue recorded in your medical record, your official military medical record, because uh, a TBI, for instance, a lot of times the symptoms don't show up for six months or a year later. Uh, that was the case with me. It was a little bit later. And if that stuff is not recorded, then it, then you will have a tough time with your VA disability claim establishing that. So you, you asked me about what are some symptoms they should look out for. For me, it was just that I, w I noticed it right away. I couldn't think of basic words, so things I was trying to communicate. I, I had to talk around a certain words. So that, that's how it manifests for me. But with other folks, you know, it can be blurred vision, feeling sick a lot, nauseous, uh, and, and other typical traumatic brain injury symptoms. But uh, the underlying message, though, is, is that when you have symptoms and when you feel different than you used to, take care. Veterans have five years of free medical care with the VA. You're entitled to that now. It's a law. So go ahead and, and, and seek that care right away and make sure you're utilizing resources around you. You mentioned it took six months for you to, to see some of your symptoms. Yeah. Typically, typically, how long can it take, or, or, or is there a, a long end and a short end of those things? From what I've read, it does, it does depend on the severity of traumatic brain injury. For instance, I mentioned I have a mild uh, TBI. There's you know medium and severe. Mm. And I'm not sure if there's a difference between the three when the symptoms turn up, but I have heard many times from professionals and anecdotally that it does, it's not unusual for six months to a year. And the same with PTSD before the symptoms start coming up. So I guess the challenge is for some people, like my incident was obviously major. Uh, it was obvious I was shot. Okay, that's a massive event. Mm -hmm. But other, others might, might not be that way. For instance, when I was almost blown up, that one, the bomb didn't detonate correctly. They put it in backwards. So we were spraying with dirt uh, and rocks from the street, not not a shrapnel, which would have killed us if they put it in properly. Six months after that event, I, I very well may not have connected the two mm -hmm. if I had a traumatic brain injury from that incident. So you, it, you do have to sit and think, what has happened to me? Um, when, when it's something internal, like what could have caused this? It may not have been something as obvious as a car accident, but maybe some other event that happened, even if it 
fell and banged my head really hard or something like that. You do have to think about it to identify what I mean. And you go get that. In the military and across our country as a whole, we're, we don't really feel comfortable talking about mental health issues for some reason. And so I encourage folks. I, I'm wide open about mine. I encourage, I encourage folks, go have, if you think you have an issue, go have it checked out. You may have to pay a co payment. It's worth it. My thanks to Justin Constantine. This has been A Few Minutes With.